Let's join in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving us, for wanting us and for needing us. Lord, help us to know that in our hearts today and help us to journey with Jesus here at Prince of Peace as you show us those things each and every day. Lord, all of this we ask, offer, and pray to you. And all God's people said, Amen. A family was involved in a, a serious car accident actually several weeks ago. And little Mikey, four-year-old Mikey, was severely injured and needed a blood transfusion. He had to have an exact match in order to do this transfusion. And the only person that was an exact match was his eight-year-old brother, Danny. So Danny and Mike's dad took Danny aside and said, your little brother Mikey needs help. He needs a blood transfusion. Would you be willing to help? Explain to him, explain to him why and the process. And after a little bit, Danny looked down and thought and thought and looked up at his dad and said, yeah, I'll help my brother Mikey. Dad, being overjoyed, took Danny into the surgical room with Mikey, and they did the blood transfusion. After a little bit, the doctor came back, and he looked at both boys and dad and mom and said, everything's going to be just fine, guys. Mikey's going to pull through just fine. And at that moment, at that moment, Danny, looking at his brother, turned his head and looked at his father. Tears streaming down his face. He looked at his dad and said, Mikey's gonna be okay? His dad said, sure is, Danny. Everything's gonna be fine. And that's when Danny paused and started crying even harder. And he looked at his dad and said, so then when am I gonna die? Danny's a helper. That's what a helper does. And that's what we're talking about today in our Enneagram is the helper. The one who helps others. To be honest with you, I'm a number two. I'm a helper on the Enneagram. And so when, we, when I started writing this and putting this together, it was very eye-opening for me. Now, I am, not, I am not an Enneagram servant like Pastor Carl here. I am not uh, uh, well-versed in this as he is. So I had to put it into Matt Koenig terms that made it easier on me. So I put it into movies, superheroes, and 90s TV shows. <laughs> This actually really helped me. Um, if you are a helper, you're like Dobby from the Harry Potter movies or books. If you're a two, you're like Hawkeye from the Marvel comics. If you're a, a two, a helper, you are like Aunt Viv from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That made sense to me, okay? But let's go into real world. Maybe that might help a little more. If you are a helper, you are like Desmond Tutu. You are like Nancy Reagan. You're like singer-songwriter uh, Stevie Wonder. You are like the movie's Spider-Man, played by Tom Holland. Teenage girls, you are very welcome for that picture. <laughs> or if you're a Trekkie, you're like Dr. McCoy. All of them are helpers. All of them are people who help. So what is it that this looks like? Well, in order to kind of get a good glimpse into this part of the Enneagram, we need to look at the person, the, the biblical character, that really exemplifies this. And it's John, the disciple. The one whom Jesus loved. You see, John is the epitome of a helper. Look at his gospel. What is the whole thing about? Love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And so that's what he talks about in all of his scriptural references, including what he talks about Jesus. In fact, he refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. 
putting himself beneath Christ and the other disciples to push them up, to help them gain respect, but also in another way, I'm the one whom Jesus loved. John was also at the foot of the cross when Christ was crucified and was there helping the whole way to support Christ and what he was doing, seeing if there was anything he could do. And when Jesus looks at him, he says, John, behold your mother. And John takes Jesus' mother Mary into his home and she becomes his mother. John is a helper. Let's take a look at the card, and this gives us a little more insight into all the attributes of a helper. You see, a helper, their need is to be needed. Kind of works. Their God attribute is generosity. Their Achilles heel is pride. I always put in pride or slash ego gets in the way. And their healing message is you are wanted. We're going to get into these a little bit today as we run through our message, for, message time for today. And I want to start out with their attribute of generosity. You see, God shows these all through the scripture and to us. We see this in everything through scripture. From Genesis 3, where Adam and Eve sinned, God should have said, done. You're gone. But he doesn't. He looks at him and he says, you know what? We're going to work through this. We're going to let you live. And not only that, I'm going to send you a savior that's going to take care of all of this. He does it with Abraham when he gives him a child, even at his advanced age, he was generous because Abraham becomes the father of so many generations. He does it with the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, trying to get out of Egypt. He parts the Red Sea. He's generous to let them get out. Fast forward, he's generous. He sends us Christ, his only son, to die for each and every one of us. That's generosity. He also, though, today provides for each of us he gives us family, friends, food, money, health. Whatever we need is ours. More than we need is ours. That's the generosity of giving from a helper. That's God's generosity for us. The problem is, what gets in the way? Pride. Ego. Hey, you've probably heard this, haven't you? <laughs> Look what I did. Look what I was able to do. They can't do it without me. I'm so important. Did you see that? You see, those are the attributes of a helper that get in the way. That attribute of pride hurts them. That attribute of pride leads them into a bad place. That is their big struggle, is their ego getting in the way of helping. In fact, I can mostly say that sometimes their helping is not a selfless act. Not because they want something in return, but because of what they get in shoulders back, chest out, I feel good about myself. However, that's not their biggest struggle. The biggest struggle for someone who is a helper is being wanted. It's that deep desire to be wanted by other people. They, in fact, they want and need to help people so much that they take on their own emotions, other people's emotions. If somebody is hurting, they hurt. If somebody is having a difficult time, they have the same difficult time. In fact, it gets so bad and... and my wife Dawn doesn't know I'm going to pick on her a little bit. Her and I have learned that we cannot work in the same congregation together because everything that she feels, I take on. And the problem with that is, is then I don't have any of my own feelings where we work. That's a problem 
with a helper. But it goes even further than this. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a personal story to give you an example of what this might look like. Several months ago, I was doing a project at the house. And as I was working on this project, I was knee deep in a certain part of it that I really needed to finish that night. Now, I could have taken the time off, but I really didn't want to. My wife comes to me and she says, Matt, I have this idea. We need to do this. Can you help me? Which, of course, being the helper, I said, of course, I can help you. She says, we need to move boxes of paper from this house to school tonight, and I need you in your truck because I need your strong back. <laughs> I looked at her and smiled, and I said, I, I really don't want to. I really need to finish this. I really need to get this done. Her comment back to me was, okay, I'll take hope. Can we still use your truck? I said, sure. For the next three weeks, three weeks, this is what rolled through my mind. I let her down. She's not going to like me anymore because I didn't help her. She doesn't need me anymore because she can do it on her own. I'm not wanted. The people there will look at me and say, oh, Matt didn't help us. What good is he? We don't need him. He doesn't need us. We, who cares? He's worthless. That deep desire to be needed can rule who you are as a helper. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced something similar to that, but I have. This week we are celebrating Pentecost. We are celebrating that time when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. And I'd like to pull out some of our scripture reading of what we read for today. And I'd like to show it to you if you'd like to open your Bibles. We're just going to read a couple of verses. Uh, in page 1649 of the Pew Bible, 1649 of the Pew Bible, it's Acts 2, verses 36 to 39. Acts 2, verses 36 to 39. To give you a little bit of background in this, so the, is, the, so the Israelites, the disciples are hiding in a room. The Holy Spirit comes. Jesus says, wait, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And he does, and he comes through like wind. And fire burns on their heads. Now, we always think of it as fire on the tops of their heads, and I've heard that, but I've also heard theologians say that the tongues of fire were actually their tongues were on fire. Hence why they spoke in different languages. The disciples then leave leave where they are and they go out into the community and they start, they start preaching this gospel of Jesus to so many people, and the people around them say, these guys got to be drunk. They, they can't possibly be doing this. Which I always thought was funny, because if you had fire on your head, that would not be the first thing that I would think of, but that's another story for another day. And here's what Peter says. We're starting in verse 36. Here's what Peter says to them. He says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, listen to these words, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Repent and be baptized. Peter does not tell them, hey, go and give all your stuff away and then Jesus will want you. He doesn't say go and help your mom stack boxes or help your wife move paper boxes. He doesn't say any of that. He says repent. Jesus already wants you. He already desires you. He already needs you. So just accept it and move on. It's not about what you do. It's about what he's done for you. That actually leads us then to our memory verse for today. Our memory verse 
is from John 13. This is where, this is where Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. And he goes to Peter, and Peter doesn't want him to. And Jesus says, I gotta wash your feet, Peter. This is what you're called, that's what I'm called to do. And Peter says, No, then wash my head and my hands as well. And Jesus says, This, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. In other words, Peter, don't worry about this. You don't have to do any more. You're already clean. I'm here to serve you, not the other way around. I've done this for you. I struggled putting these together, and thank God for Pastor Carl walking me through that, because he got me to this point. And once he got me here, I went back to my office and finished writing this message. And I will be honest with you, I, I wrote this three or four different times, this ending. And I practiced this several times on Thursday. And every time that I read this and I spoke it, I was, I was moved to tears. Because I don't think this is just a message for me, although I need to hear it. I think it's a message for all of us. Not just the helper, but all mankind. And it's these words that really hit me. And I'm hoping that I don't cry because my kids say that I'm a crybaby, so it happens quite often. But here's what it says. He told Peter it's okay. And he's telling us it's okay to have your own thoughts and feelings. It's okay to be you because Jesus is with you. Be you. Everybody else is taken. You are wanted. You are needed. You are loved for who you are because of Christ. It's not what you do. It's not what you've done. It's not what you will do. It's not how much you've done. It's about what Christ has done for you. It's about his love for you. And it's about who he is for you. If I can leave you with one thought today, one message going forward, you are loved. You are wanted. You are needed. And you are his. You always have been. And you always will be. Thanks be to God that he wants us for what he did for us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.